This show, just like all the other StarCast shows, are available at adfreeshows.com. Folks, we're going to open up uh, for a, a brief period here and get some questions in. Uh, I want to uh, shout out to their folks that are watching on, on Fight TV. If you're going to watch along with we got the, the Holy Grail coming up. The match with Bret Hart and Tom McGee. And if you're watching at home, you're going to have a second screen experience. You want to go to the WWE Network. It is uh, it just uh, do a search on Tom McGee, and it will be 19 minutes and 40 seconds in. I'll tell you again, but so you can get it queued up. Now, let's, uh, let's get some questions going. I think we've got a microphone out there in the crowd. Uh, Brett, Vince Averill from Los Angeles. Uh, yesterday, Arn Anderson told a story about you putting a prosthetic ear into his double sea breeze. Do you have any recollection of having done that and whose fake ear it was? It was some friend of T- Ted DiBiase's. <laughs> some guy that went to college with Ted DiBiase and uh, I can remember sitting with him at the bar and he could take his ear right off and show it to you. It looked like a little rubber ear. and uh, So they kept getting... Uh, I remember Kurt and Arn Anderson were drinking. It was like... Actually, I think it was Arn Anderson's last night in the WWE. He had left and was going back to uh, WCW like the next day. It was his last... So everyone was sort of having a send-off uh, in the bar for him. Drinking with him and slapping him on the back and mostly just telling stories and having a good last night with uh, Arn. And Kurt kept getting in to sing some song about there's a... There's a ear in my beer or whatever and it was like some hank williams song or ear something. in my beer <laughs> i think it was a tear in my beer is okay. how the song goes but uh he they had dropped the ear into his beer and and they kept singing the song and Arn was singing it and i remember everybody in the bar was in on it like everyone was laughing and uh, i wish they had iphones back then with all the cameras but uh it was just so funny when Arn realized it, and when he looked at his glass, as, as drunk as he was, and he looked at the glass, and there was an ear in it. I remember he threw up all over the counter. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's get another one in. Hey, Brett, uh, Matt McCarthy from Rumford, Rhode Island. Uh, we all know how the relationship ended, but I'm curious, do you have a favorite Vince story? Well, I have the one which I've told a few times about the strip bar in uh, San Antonio it's such a great I, I don't know if I got all day to tell you that story but uh, all, I get say to Tom. Is, all I say is this is that um, Vince showed up at this very um, fun filled strip bar in San Antonio that we were all sort of celebrating and we had just been told that um, we were going to start Olympic drug testing like on a scale that nobody had ever seen before we were we had actually the Olympic drug testers hired to start testing us and there'd be no tolerance for anything, no drugs, no, um, no steroids, no nothing. Like every single thing, even marijuana was done, which I think sadly was really a big mistake because I think once they took away the marijuana from a lot of wrestlers, you'd see them down in the bars later just taking pills and drinking all the time. And you see all these wrestlers that died over the next 15 years. There was, a lot of them started from when taking away their marijuana. They'd go to their room and smoke a joint and go to bed. Nobody ever heard from them. Now they're in the bars drinking hard liquor and taking pills. And it's like, that was a fatal mistake that uh, I think um, they eventually recognized that it was a step in the wrong direction. But anyway, I'll just say that with Vince, Vince showed up really drunk and... Um, I remember Hogan was talking about um, him and Hawk and Animal were in the bar, and they were Hawk was talking pretty brashly about how he was gonna they were gonna do their finish on Vince in the bar, and I remember hearing it and going, I, "That I want to see." <laughs> and so I remember saying, "I think they're gonna do it," and I remember telling Jim, and I remember Jim was pulling on his beard, and Jim was going. They don't get the guts. They're not going to do it. You know, and I said, yeah, they're, they're going to do it. And I remember Hawk was already up on a pole. Whoever, whatever the girl was on the pole was gone now, and it was, a, it was Hawk up there. And Animal came up behind Vince, who was so drunk. I mean, he was, he was in a very happy place anyway. And all of a sudden, they, he picked him up, like, came up from behind and put his head between his legs and stood up, and Vince almost lost his balance, and... I can remember, like, oh my God, they're going to do it. And that, that finish of Hawk and Animals, that clothesline off the top, was a pretty painful move to take, especially on your knees uh, when you fell. It was, 
It was a, uh, you know, hard. It was just carpet in that bar, no padding. And uh, anyway, I just remember it looked so real. It looked like they were going to take his head off. And Hawk had been talking about it for the last hour about he was going to take Vince's head off. And I remember we were all sort of like, yes. Go, go. And then uh, Hawk dove off and gave this little powder puff clothesline that was all pretend. And Beefcake and Hogan kind of caught Vince and gently set him on the ground. <laughs> everybody gave a little golf clap. And it was like, I can remember going, how quaint, you know. <laughs> I thought they were really going to do it, you know. And I remember Jim pulling on his beard and going, Heart Foundation would have done it. And I'm going. <laughs> and I was like. Yeah, maybe, maybe the Heart Foundation would have done it. And then I just remember, I remember thinking, oh my God, what did I just say? And I remember I had two shots of Jack Daniels in, in my hand, and I remember setting them, trying to set him down. And by the time I set him down, Jim had already picked up Vince in a bear hug. <laughs> and I remember, I'll never forget Hulk Hogan looking at me. He gave me this look like, do you got the balls to do it? Or are you going to do it like Hawk? And I remember I just kind of looked at him and I took off and I took Vince's head off of that clothesline. Uh, all right, one more and then we're all going right. to get to the Holy Grail. One Check more. out We Watch Wrestling, by the way, with Vince and Matt. Hey, sir. Uh, hello, Jeffrey Harris. Uh, Brett, uh, as much as it means coming up from a guy like me, I just want to thank you for all the memories you've given us and the great career you've given us. Thank you from the bottom of my heart and thank you for being here today. Um, my question is... Thank you. Thank once you, you for started, watching me. Once you started uh, getting into the singles act, um, was there ever a moment that sticks out in your mind where you realize, man, this is really working and I'm really coming into my own as a single star? I definitely... One that sticks out for me was when you talked about going to Europe and how you were booked earlier on the card and the fans like started like really coming after you because... They were really responding to you in Europe. Was there any, ever anything like that for you? Well, I had, um, I think I was on the radar for most fans. Like most of the fans are starting to really kind of appreciate how hard I worked all the time. And uh, my reactions going out to the rings were, were getting better. You know, everything with me was like, I can remember when I first came to WWF, I, there was um, a lot of, People used to talk about me having no charisma and I had no personality and I had this and I had that or I didn't have this and I didn't have... But, you know, the truth is it all comes from confidence. And, like, most of the time for me it was like um, I was always putting somebody over. You know, always putting somebody over. Like, we need you to put Mr. Perfect over because he's going to work with Hulk Hogan next. And I was like, well, what about me? Like, what about you guys were... You know, they promised me so many times that they were going to give me this big push and... That big push usually was uh, me tripping out of the starting gate, losing my first match, and then losing, like I lost the bad news. They had me break the trophy in that WrestleMania three or four or whatever. And it, it was like, I'm so close to, it's kind of a break. I remember it was kind of cool that I had got to be the, one of the guys at the end with the Battle Royal. But then when it came to me wrestling bad news and exacting my revenge, I lost every night to him and got carried, you know, I got, and I go, that's, that's, how, that's how my baby face run started like tripping out of the gate and it's like a few weeks later and it's like I'm I'm losing every night to bad news or I'm losing the perfect or I'm losing to this guy and I'm losing and they go well he, he, it's not working he's not getting over like he's we thought he was ready but he's not and it's like it's not me that wasn't ready it's you guys that are not ready and then they it really came to a head I think after we lost the belts to the nasty boys and we were in Las Vegas the very next day and um, they came in and they said, um, we need me to come up with a move, um, a finishing move, a submission move. And we talked about the, the scorpion death lock or whatever it is that Sting used. And, and um, <clears throat> somebody asked me if I knew how to put it on. And I said, I don't, I don't ever, I've never used it. And I went into the dressing room and asked somebody if anyone knew how to put on a scorpion death lock. And... Uh, Conan put his hand up and said he remembered how to put it on and we went in the showers and kind of practiced around a little bit and he showed me how it worked and um, so I had a meeting with Vince that day right after all that and um, I remember they said we're going to put you with Kurt Henning I remember I said I don't want to work with Kurt he just won the belt and they said, yeah, but it's going to be great. You're going to have great matches. And I go, yeah, but I'm going to trip out of the starting gate again. He's not, he just won the title yesterday. Surely he's not going to be losing it to me. 
So I'll wrestle him and, and lose every night for the next uh, three months, wrestling Kurt. And then somebody else is going to step up and take my spot. And, uh, and they'll get, they'll end up, I, I figured in my mind, I, I knew accurately, just guessing though, that the belt would probably change hands at SummerSlam, is what my head told me. And that's when I want to be in position to, to, for them to go, okay, we'll put you with Kurt. And, um, but, but I remember they wanted me to work with Kurt right off the bat, and I said, no, I refuse to do it. I'll just go home. I'll just go home, and you can call me when you're ready to give me this big push you've been promised me for eight years. Um, and I remember they sort of rethought it, and, and they ended up giving Kurt, they gave Davy Boy to to Kurt for a while, which was fair because Davy had just come in and they'd be kind of fresh. And as it turned out, by the end of summer, I was I was picked to work with Kurt in SummerSlam, and then my my real push started. But you have to. It's a chess game. Sometimes you have to know when to stand up and say, "Hey, wait a minute," you know. And I'd been around long enough to watch all these chances go to everyone else, and it was like, "Hold it! This is my chance now." Yeah. You guys promised me forever you're going to give me a chance. Give me, give me my chance. And, and in fact, I finally did get that chance. Yeah, and it turned out very well. Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson. Thanks for checking out the podcast here on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you get a notice anytime we upload some new content. And go save yourself some money right now. If you're in a 30-year loan or you have credit card debt, it's not a matter of if I can save you money. It's a matter of how much. Find out right now for free at SaveWithConrad.com.